Hello everybody! Today we're going to talk about the Avengers Age of Ultron, the latest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the sequel to one of the biggest blockbusters of all time and one of my favorite movies of all time. This movie starts off with the Avengers raiding a Hydra base because of course Hydra is still around. Cut one head off, another one grows back for the next movie. And they are raiding this base to take back Loki's scepter. Although, while Loki's scepter is in the movie, the trickster god himself is somehow missing in action. And in the process of taking back the scepter, they inadvertently free two human experiments, Pietro and Wanda Maximoff, also known as Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. And yes, they are human experiments. They aren't actually mutants, because Fox owns the trademark for that. It's weird. So after the Avengers bust into the base and Hulk smashes a bunch of Hydra agents, they recover the scepter and Tony Stark discovers that the gem inside the scepter contains some weird form of artificial intelligence. And he and Bruce Banner use it to create a peacekeeping robot, which they call Ultron. Unfortunately, shortly after being brought to life, Ultron determines that the only way to truly achieve peace on Earth is by wiping out humanity. Oops. And over the course of the movie, he ends up aligning himself with Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch and begins constructing an ultimate weapon that he will use to, well, achieve world peace, as it were. And it's up to the Avengers to stop him. Much like the first movie, Joss Whedon's sense of humor is all over this one, so if you like his style of writing, then there's plenty to enjoy here as well. Of course, the movie has plenty of great action sequences. In fact, it actually starts out with one right out of the gate. And these are a lot of fun to watch. I especially like the battle between Hulk and Iron Man. There's a point where the Hulk's mind gets messed with by the Scarlet Witch and he starts going crazy, so Tony has to put on this even bigger suit of armor in order to stop him. And even with the bigger suit of armor, Hulk is not easy to take down. He must have punched him in the face about 50,000 times, and still, the big green monster just would not stop. Go to sleep, 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 it's not working! The action sequences do feature a lot of collateral damage, but the Avengers do everything in their power to ensure that there are as few civilian casualties as possible. When Iron Man is fighting the Hulk, he makes an effort to take Hulk to an empty building that has no civilians inside, so they can have their little fight without killing anyone. And at the end of the movie when Ultron is about to set off his massive weapon. The Avengers' primary goal in that situation is not just to fight off Ultron, but to get all of the civilians out of there. And when someone brings up the possibility that they might not be able to save all of them, Captain America is immediately like, nope, fuck that, we save them all or we die trying. I don't know for certain if this was done as a direct response to Man of Steel, but I certainly got that impression. And now that I've mentioned Man of Steel, I just know I'm gonna get so many angry comments. Go ahead, leave them below, get it out of your system. The special effects looked outstanding, as you might expect, and the 3D was pretty good as well, which is odd considering it's a post-conversion and most of the Marvel movies that go through a post-conversion do not look all that great in 3D, but this was the exception. Ultron made for a pretty menacing villain and a pretty interesting character on top of that, and a particularly tricky guy to kill since he can just copy himself into another robot body like that and the only way to kill him is to wipe out every single body he's copied himself into. As for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, they were... okay, I suppose, but the Quicksilver from Days of Future Past was a lot more fun than this one. I just thought that version of the character was written better, and I thought Evan Peters' performance was better than Aaron Taylor Johnson's. And Scarlet Witch's costume was just kind of... meh. It didn't really scream witch to me, Scarlet or otherwise. Now one thing working against this movie is it has very little in the way of actual character development. And part of that may just be due to the fact that a lot of these characters have already had their own movies and they were around for the previous Avengers movie, so there's not a lot left for them to develop. We do get a little bit here and there. We actually learn a bit about Hawkeye's background, finally. And we also dive into Black Widow's past a bit and get into her new relationship with Bruce Banner. And we also got some cameos from a few lesser characters in the Marvel Universe. Heimdall actually shows up for a moment, Eric Selvig. Uh, Agent Carter even gets a cameo. When uh, Captain America's mind is getting messed with by the Scarlet Witch, he goes into a dream sequence and uh, Peggy shows up. I certainly was not expecting that, but it was a welcome surprise. I'm never going to complain about Agent Carter showing up. In fact, if you ever hear me complain about Haley Atwell appearing on camera, 
Call the doctor because there's clearly something wrong with me. I was a bit disappointed about the lack of certain characters in the movie, like Falcon, for example. He's in there, he has a cameo, but he doesn't actually do anything. Which was disappointing because I really liked him in Winter Soldier. War Machine finally gets to do something at least, so, you know, that's a step up from Iron Man 3, but where was Falcon in all this? Also, no Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., not even a cameo. Unless you count Maria Hill and Nick Fury. Also, I mentioned this before, but Loki's scepter is in the movie, and not even a cameo from Loki? And there was a place where they could have put one very easily, but no. And there is also a certain character who dies in the movie, and no, that's not a spoiler, it's a Joss Whedon movie, you know someone's gonna die. I won't say who it was in case anyone doesn't want me to spoil it if you haven't seen it already, but I will say that it definitely is not the way I would have gone. But then again, just because someone dies doesn't mean they're going to be permanently dead. Agent Coulson died in the first movie. He got better. This is a comic book property, after all. No one ever really stays dead. Except Uncle Ben. There are a few moments in this movie where they seem to be a little bit too concerned about setting up future events and not concerned enough with the story at hand. One adjective I've heard thrown around about this movie is transitional. And yeah, it's definitely a transitional movie. There are scenes in here that are setting up Civil War and the Infinity Gauntlet and possibly even something for the Fantastic Four movie. The character Ulysses Claw has a very brief part in this movie, played by Andy Serkis no less, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he did have some involvement with the Fantastic Four in the comics, so I don't know for sure if that's the direction they're going in, but it's possible. Now one more thing I should probably talk about, no doubt you have heard that there is a bit of controversy surrounding this movie regarding a scene between Bruce and Natasha. In this scene, Natasha is telling Bruce what happened to her at the Assassin Academy where she was brought up, and apparently in this academy they have what they call a graduation ceremony, which is basically just a fancy way of saying she was sterilized. And that was always the final step before they sent these assassins out in the world to start doing their thing. And after telling Bruce about her sterilization, Natasha says, You think you're the only monster? And many people have interpreted this to mean, I can't have children, therefore I'm a monster. However, I came away with a much different interpretation. The way I saw it, this Assassin's Academy wanted nothing but killers. These girls that they were training were supposed to have no other purpose in their life but to kill. And the graduation ceremony, as they put it so very delicately, was the final way of removing any possible distraction or any other possible purpose they could serve in their lives apart from killing. And that was what made her a monster. She was designed to be incapable of doing anything but killing, and the sterilization was just the last step in that process. Now, it's entirely possible that I am wrong, and I will concede that even if I'm right, the dialogue in this scene could have been written better to clarify this. And in fact, it probably was at one point, because I know Joss Whedon said in an interview that he was butting heads with Marvel throughout this movie's production. And there's a section of this movie that takes place at a safe house, and pretty much everything that happens in this safe house, including the conversation between Banner and Natasha, he had to fight tooth and nail just to keep that in the movie. So it's entirely possible that what we ended up with is not how it was originally written. And there were some other complaints regarding the Black Widow character, like how she was put in a relationship with Bruce Banner. A lot of people didn't seem to like that, not because of that specific pairing, but because apparently putting her in a relationship automatically makes the character weak, which I don't agree with at all. I never got the feeling that she was simply put with Bruce Banner to complete her character. Really, it seemed more like the two characters were complementing each other. And yes, there is a point in this movie where she gets captured, but she's not exactly the proverbial damsel in distress. She's not just sitting back all, oh, woe is me, waiting for her knight in shining armor to rescue her. No, of course not. She's still stealthily working behind Ultron's back to help undermine him and still doing her part as a member of the team. 
In any case, this led to Joss Whedon getting a whole lot of shit, and people were calling him a misogynist and saying he didn't know how to write strong female characters. And really? Like, you realize this is Joss Whedon we're talking about. The same Joss Whedon that created Buffy the Vampire Slayer? And I'm not gonna sit here and say Joss Whedon is God's gift to feminism or anything. He's not. And if you want to criticize him, you are welcome to do so. If you have legitimate problems with how he handled the characters, then go right ahead. But when you do, please leave the torch and pitchfork at home. He did not do anything nearly bad enough to deserve the torch and pitchfork treatment. Not even close. James Gunn, who directed Guardians of the Galaxy, wrote a really good response to all the shit that Joss Whedon has been getting over this. And I'm gonna put a link to the full post below, but I'll just read you a little bit of it here. A couple months ago, someone on Twitter wrote me that something one of my characters said in my movie hurt him. I've gotten hundreds of tweets from people angry about moments in my films over the years, and I just ignore them or get angry in return. But that one tweet affected me profoundly. The last thing I want to do with my work is hurt someone, especially someone who already feels disenfranchised. That made me think about what I write and what I put in my films, and I will be more thoughtful about situations like it in the future. That is, one honest and vulnerable tweet affected more change in me than hundreds of angry ones. Definitely something to keep in mind. If you're going to criticize someone, please try to do it peacefully, because pure rage is not going to help anyone. Well, I think I've ranted long enough about this movie, so let's get to the final thoughts. Not as good as the first Avengers movie, and does have some issues, but it was still a whole lot of fun and I enjoyed it very much. If you haven't seen it, well, you're probably in the minority at this point, but I would definitely recommend it if you were a fan of the first one. And that's it for Age of Ultron, so until next time, take care.